Welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you are new here. My name is Stephanie, and I am really, really glad to see you today. Happy spring. Happy spring, my friend. <laughs> it has finally come. It has finally come. The time I'm recording this, we are officially in spring season. Spring season. Um, so that is fun. That is exciting. Um, and you know what? Speaking of, <laughs> I didn't really realize this until I sat down to record, but like I feel like my voice is like a little bit different. I think it's because of pollen. <laughs> so how fitting, how fitting for spring. Hopefully um, it won't, it won't affect my voice too much today, but I do notice a little difference. I do notice a little difference in my voice today, but I really want to record. I really want to make this video um, because I have something fun, something kind of cool for us to do today. Something that I hope you will enjoy. So, because of it being spring and Easter is coming too, in like one week, almost a little over a week away from Easter, because it's so early this year, it's so early. Um, March 31st is Easter. So, this is a very cool book. It's a vintage book. It's from 1953. It's from 1953. And it is the Easter edition ideals ideals and ideals is a publication that has been around for a really long time i think since gosh i looked it up i want to say it was 1944 maybe um but since the 40s and they're still they actually still make these ideals books i didn't know that um actually i didn't even know <laughs> what this was um when i found it um i found it at my parents house <laughs> Um, I found it in my parents' house, in the house that I grew up in, and I didn't know this existed. Um, my mom had a really cool, um, antique secretary. Um, we had an antique secretary. I've adopted it. Now it's at my house. But, um, she would store, like, family stuff in it, um, in the drawers. There was just, like, all kinds of interesting things that I cleaned out. Um, and actually, guess what? She had, like, two or three, um, vintage magazines. <laughs> she had two or three vintage magazines in there, so I saved them so we can do videos with the vintage magazines. And side note, um, we're gonna do a vintage magazine again soon. I know it's been a minute. It has been a minute since we did a vintage magazine. Um, but I was saving... I like to do them kind of in the same time of year, you know? Where they are published, although I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> It's fun. Um, so I have a spring one. I have a spring one, um, that, not for my mom's house, but, um, that I've had for a while. It's Better Homes and Gardens. <laughs> uh, from the 30s, actually. So I thought we would do that soon. Anyway, that's just a little side note. Um, but this, this book was in, this book was in the secretary. And I was like, what an interesting little book. What an interesting little book. Um, but this is the Easter issue of Ideals Magazine from 1953. It has poetry and prose in it. Um, and while I'll show you, see here's the back, I mean, because it's Easter, it's Easter themed. And of course we have this spring, spring scene here with the church, with the church and the people, um, going into the church, but I just wanted to go ahead and, and let you know that even though that there's like some religious, like very religious and biblical type content in here, we're not going to do that. Um, we are going to go with the more, um, spring themed, we're going to do the more spring themed things in here. So I thought it'd be fun if I could sit here and read, um, could I read to y'all? That'd be okay. <laughs> Um, normally when we do magazine videos, I do the overhead camera and we just see the pages, but I don't know, this is a little different than a normal magazine. Um, and I just thought maybe we could sit together and I could read you some poems. I could read you some poems and there's a story in here. Um, and I'll read you a story. <laughs> it's a short story. Um, so we'll do some springtime poems, some springtime poems, and there will be a little bit of, um, like, Easter Bunny stuff. Easter Bunny. Like, not, not anything heavy. <laughs> nothing, 
nothing religious or anything like that just some light light breezy springtime content for you <laughs> so um we will go ahead and get started reading I'll read for you and you can see we have like a pretty like blooming tree here behind um, and some just some greenery well we're assuming it's greenery it's just like a grayscale photo but but you know just a little spring scene behind it footsteps by Agnes Davenport Bond springtime danced about my garden frisked about upon the sod now the violets are springing where her elfin feet have trod these are imprints where she wandered where she scampered in her play waking nature from her slumber spilling color on the way springtime joyous happy springtime leaping with a restless flare she is welcome in my garden she is welcome everywhere and then the next one is called countryside countryside by Merle G. New. Merle G. New. Come, walk with me along the rustic way, where lilacs blow and blooming fruit trees sway. Long you and I have known the countryside, have loved the beauty of the fields so wide, have felt the softness of the springtime breeze, and heard the rustle of the aspen tree. Some folk there are who crave the city crowd, and thrive amid the traffic tumult aloud. They live and work where trains and subways roar, and of their fate will ask for little more. But you and I would stifle in the maze, would long for country skies and quiet days. No pressure on us as the twilight falls, just rest from work when sleepy Robin calls. So walk with me along the rustic way, among the pleasant things of every day. The next piece that I'm going to read is called The Golden Hills. The Golden Hills. And we just have this nice kind of mountain, this little mountainous scene. And it's like a little, I think that's a road. Oh, yeah, that's the road that goes through it. I thought it was a stream. I thought it was like a little stream at first, but I think it's the road. I think. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so The Golden Hills. The Golden Hills by Grace Noel Crowell. I said that right. Okay, so. Once in a dark and troubled time, when I saw no road ahead, a wise and kindly counselor sat by my side and said, Each morning I drive down a valley road to get to my work, and I can often see nothing at all for the fog. That blots out the earth and sky. But I say to myself, I shall drive ahead, carefully, without sight, for I know I shall come onto higher ground where the hills are cold with light, and I just keep on. Oh, wise, kind words that fell on my heart that day, nothing can blot them from my mind, nothing can take them away, and now, when a thick fog shuts me in to choke me and blind my eyes, I am so glad for the hills ahead, for the friend who was kind and wise. The next one is kind of like a little Easter, a long Easter poem. <laughs> and it says, one Easter long ago. I'll show you the illustration up close. Here you go. man and woman over here. And this one is called One Easter Long Ago by Mrs. Roy L. Pfeiffer, I think. I don't think it's Pfeiffer. I think it's Pfeiffer. So Mrs. Roy L. Pfeiffer. When I was but a little miss and you a sturdy boy, we planned one Easter time to fill our mother's heart with joy. We wanted to surprise her. We yearned to make her glad. So we saved up all our money, every penny that we had, and we'd creep away to count it in the attic, dim and cool, or to add some hoarded coppers to that precious. 
precious little pool. Then we'd whisper, plan and giggle in our innocence and bliss when you were but a sturdy boy and I a little miss. We wished to buy a flower, a fragrant lily tall, but the pile grew oh so slowly. Though we scrimped and saved it all, and then one sunny morning, while we planned and whispered there, we heard a telltale little squeak upon the attic stair. We thought that mother'd heard us. We wondered if she had, but when the smiling face appeared, we saw that it was dad. His eyes were bright and happy, and we knew he must have heard, but he reached into his pocket, and he never said a word. Then, early Easter morning, we went to mother's bed our sacrificial offering, a pot of tulips red. Since then has many a springtime passed, and many a lovelier bloom has found its way on Easter day to brighten mother's room. But none was ever loved so much, indeed none seemed so fine, at that first simple blossom on that long gone Easter time. Then with lots of love and pennies, a little lass and lad, bought an Easter flower for mother with a little help from dad. So, you know, the kids saving their little little pennies. And then we have the mom, the dad, the mom's holding holding her tulips right there. Nice mm-hmm. scene here. The next poem is called A Lovely Thing. On lovely things, and we have this lovely, lovely like forest, like natural scene. And this poem is by Mary Pollard Tynes. Mary Pollard Tynes. Lovely things. My heart is stirred by lovely things. An opening rose, a droning bee, the flash and flare of burnished wings, an April tree. The meadows and the hills, blue mist, gulls and a sea, wind swept and wild, the sunset's gold, a far white cloud, a little child. For beauty is not bought and sold, and he who loves life's lovely things shall walk the way of love and hear the whir of wings. Here on our next pages, we have like an illustrated forest. (laughs) <laughs> for his little bird, little grassy area here, and the path kind of, kind of meanders. <laughs> so this poem is called April. April. It's by Edgar Daniel Kramer. It says, although she is weeping as she treads the hills, as she walks the meadows with the daffodils, while folks wisely whisper of her doubts and fears, I see April smile through a mist of tears. Although she is weeping as she shyly goes, where the lilacs murmur to the waking rose, while folks are complaining as her white feet pass, I hear April laughing in the fragrant grass. Although she is weeping as she walks the earth, as the clods are lifting into glad new birth, while folks are lamenting that she fares with grief, I hear April singing in each trembling leaf. Then our next poem is called Spring Beauties. Spring Beauties by Maisie T. Newsom. I should have cleaned the rugs today and washed the windows too, but I watched a robin tend her young, as all good mothers do. The dishes went unwashed because the tulips beckoned me and a violet carpet in the woods was a lovely thing to see. My little house is always neat. It shines from room to room and stands inspection any day, but not when violets bloom. And over here, this is nice. My goodness, this is a good nice texture. (laughs) Kind of has a little bit more of a texture to this paper. We just have like a country road, a little country road here. And this is called Down a Country Lane, Down a Country Lane by Mina M. Scott. Mina M. Scott. 
Oh, spring comes quickly down a country lane. The dogwood trees, which were so brown and bare, have burst their winter prisons and released small clouds of ivory glory everywhere. The roadside ditches, which so long have held the residual pools of April rain, are outlined now by creeping grasses green, where earliest violets blossom once again, like delft blue stars, and there within the wood, the wild plum tree has donned her fragile shawl of creamy lace, while red bud bloom reflects a rosy glow around it all. Across the fields I hear the robins sing, beseeching that the world forget its care, and pause a while beside a country lane in thankful joy, because the spring is there. Our next poem is over here on this page, and we have like this country scene, it's a really cool fence here, some trees. This next poem is called Pixelated, Pixelated by Geraldine Ross. Folks who could walk with me in spring would whisper, she's a silly thing. I say hello to mild old cows and smile at birds on budding boughs. I sit on damp, decaying logs to hear the symphonies of frogs. And on the ground, still damp and cold, I roll like someone five years old. At dusk I come back, bruised and stained, but very grandly entertained. Oh look, it's the Easter Bunny. We have a really cool um, Easter illustration. So we have the Easter Bunny, Easter family really, Easter Bunny family, and they are painting eggs, and we have all the little bunnies, all the little bunnies all around. They are helping. They are helping. Very cute. Very cute. So we are going to read a poem called Easter Bunny's Secret. Easter Bunny's Secret by Miss- oh, hey, Mrs. Roy L. Pfeiffer is back. We have her. Okay. So, this says, Old Jack Frost took his brushes one crisp and chilly day and went to paint the countryside in colors bright and gay. Did he? I, that's interesting. I've never really thought of Jack Frost that way. Look, they have... <laughs> I think this is supposed to be him. Right here. Right there, that's supposed to be Jack Frost, and he's like, I never really thought that's part of his deal. Maybe it's just for this poem. I don't know. When I think of Jack Frost, I think of, like, Santa Claus 3, you know, like, Martin Short, like, situation. Although he turns good in the end. Sorry, spoiler alert. It's been out for a minute, though, so I don't think it's too bad. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's not... I didn't think that was part of his contract. Um, that's okay. Let's read on. Let's read on. I'll just... I'll even start over. <laughs> Sorry for the tangent. <laughs> okay. So, Easter Bunny's secret. Old Jack Frost took his brushes one crisp and chilly day and went to paint the countryside in colors bright and gay. Touched his brush on every leaf, on every bush and tree, and brightened up the whole wide world as far as I could see. The Easter Bunny followed him, and everywhere he found little bits of color that had dribbled to the ground. He scraped them up quite carefully. That golden autumn day, oh, he was very busy in his funny bunny way. In joy of joys at evening time, down in a quiet nook, he found the almost empty And now he had a secret he would tell on Easter day. The bunny smiled, and carefully he stored his paint away. And it seems to continue, continues over here on these two pages, I think. Is that gonna be? Yeah, that's the end of it. Alright, so we have, here I'll show you the pictures. You can see them. See, there we go. Okay, so we have the tree, and then we have some paint, some spillage, we got some spillage of the paint, and it's Easter Bunny, it's Easter Bunny, it's carrying some paint, a little winking cloud, and a little bird, and a squirrel, and some little flowers down there. Okay, so the poem continues. And then the winter settled down, the nights were dark and still. But 
safe inside the bunny home, they waited for the spring, when crocus buds would open and the robin redbreast sing. And sometimes in the evening, just before they went to sleep, they'd talk about the secret that it seemed they couldn't keep. But something dreadful happened one awful winter day, for naughty frisky puppy went into the woods to play. He found the Easter Bunny's house. He scampered to and fro and overturned the precious pots. The paint spilled in the snow. Mother Southwind had a message that she whispered happily to every little tiny flower and every stately tree. She gave it to the happy birds and they began to sing to pass along the precious word. Rejoice, for it is spring. But in this world of brightness, in this world of cheer and song, there was something out of order. There was something very wrong. Mother Southwind went seeking, and to her dismay she found Easter Bunny sobbing sadly, with his nose pressed to the ground. He told her all his troubles, his bunny tale of woe. Then she hurried to your garden, where the brightest blossoms grow. She told the pretty posies and the apple blossoms too, that the bunny needed colors, all the shades of every hue. The lilacs offered purple, the shy Miss Violet too. The tulips and the hyacinths gave yellow, red, and blue. The apple blossoms offered pink, the cherries white and gold. The daffodils gave all the orange his painting pots could hold. Now his pots were full to bursting, and his heart was happy too, for he could tell his secret, as he wished so much to do. So if you think the flowers aren't quite as bright as you, it's because they gave their colors to make Easter eggs for you. And here we have our next two pages, all in green, all in green. This little, little duck <laughs> here, look at this one. Um, this poem is called Mr. Bunny's Helpers, Mr. Bunny's Helpers by Richie Thurman Weichel. It says, once I had a little bunny and a baby chicken too. I also had a wee small duck whose name was Quacky Lou. Oh. When Easter time came round in the barnyard rose such clatter, I hurried down fast as I could to see what was the matter. Then Pete, the hired man, told me, your pets have strayed, I fear. They've joined the bunny's helpers, whom he calls this time each year, to dip the eggs and make the nests and do other chores, they say, so Mr. Bunny will be ready on the morn of Easter day. But when the day is over and the fun has passed along, I'm sure your pets will hurry back where here where they belong. Sure enough, two days past Easter in the barnyard rose such clatter that as before, I hurried down to see what was the matter. There, strutting through the open gate, came my bunny helpers three, the envy of the barnyard, and as proud as they could be. So, if at Easter time you miss a favorite pet or two, don't fret or feel unhappy, for they'll all come back to you. Okay, so you remember in the beginning I told you there was a story? This is the story. It's just like four or five, that's a few pages, but, um, it's the only story. I thought I'd just read it, and, um, it's called Just After Easter. I think, I haven't read the whole thing through, so this will be new for me too, but I kind of, I kind of looked it over, and it looks like it's about the Easter Bunny and some kittens and stuff, so I think we're okay. I think we're alright. Just After Easter by Mary Jane McCarthy. This is the most unusual bunny story, as you will see. Most of the adventures of Mr. Bunny Rabbit happened just before Easter, but this story began just after Easter Day last year. Mr. Bunny Rabbit frowned and wrinkled his soft pink nose. Oh, he was so unhappy, and he shouldn't have been, for it was just two days after Easter, and all the good little boys and girls had found big baskets filled with Easter eggs. But Mr. Bunny Rabbit wasn't thinking about the Easter just past. He was thinking about Easter next year, and that is why he was so unhappy. <sighs> he sighed a great big sigh, for he had such a big problem, and he didn't know what to do. And then he sighed again. His floppy ears flopped forward, covering his eyes. What was he going to do? Just then he heard a noise. It was Whiskers coming down the road from White Fur Village. Why, that gave him an idea. 
a very good idea, he thought. He would ask Whiskers, who was the mailman for all of Animal Land, to paste a big notice on the fence in the middle of the village. Can you see Whiskers pasting the sign on the fence? And what does it say? So, can you see Whiskers? Can you see Whiskers? Here. He's right there. <laughs> and his sign says, Notice. Will all of my little kitten helpers of White Fur Village meet here at the fence at two o'clock today? It is very important. Mr. Bunny Rabbit. Oh my god, he's like dressed up. He's like dressed up in a little outfit. Okay. All kitties. Look at all the kitties. And I guess that's the bunny rabbit. Wow. Looking sharp over here. Look at that. So on with our story. Well, you know how fast little kittens can run and scamper, so you know that it didn't take long before everyone knew about the meeting. And long before two o'clock, all of the kittens were waiting at the fence. And oh dear me, such noise. <laughs> they were all talking at once, trying to guess why Mr. Bunny Rabbit wanted them. And each kitten had a different idea. But nobody really knew the reason at all. And then just as the church bell rang too, Mr. Bunny Rabbit came walking down the lane. The kittens were so surprised to see him walking because he always hopped down the lane, so they knew that something terrible was wrong. Mr. Bunny Rabbit stood before all the kittens and said, Thank you, my dear little kitten friends, for coming here today. You did such a fine job this Easter collecting all the eggs for the bunnies that I know you must be tired. But early this morning, I went to visit Mr. McDonald to thank him for his help again this Easter, and he told me some very sad news. We had such a long winter this year that he's used almost all of his grain, and unless he can get some more grain, he won't be able to keep the chickens. He's planted new grain in the fields, but it takes a long time to grow, and he can't borrow grain from any of his farmer friends because they don't have any either. If he can't feed the chickens, he won't be able to keep them and then we won't have eggs for the good little children next year. The little kittens were very surprised to hear this bad news, and they all began talking at once. It was so noisy that you couldn't hear what anyone said, so Mr. Bunny Rabbit raised his paw for silence. Please, little kittens, if any of you have an idea of how to solve this serious problem, let us all hear your idea. Could we buy some food for the chickens, Mr. Bunny Rabbit? One of the kittens asked. Yes, we could do that, but we don't have any money, and neither does Farmer McDonald, said Mr. Bunny Rabbit. Why, I know lots of ways we could earn some money, Mr. Bunny Rabbit, said Fuzzy Nose. I could make gingerbread cookies and sell them and give the money to Farmer McDonald. And Inky, the little black kitty, said that she and Taffy could have a rummage sale and earn lots of money for grain. Well, my oh my, said Mr. Bunny Rabbit. You little kittens have such wonderful ideas, and if you can earn some money, we will be able to buy grain for the chickens, and then we'll have eggs for the children next year. Oh, that would be so wonderful. You are dear little kittens, and I love every one of you, and now I must hurry and tell Farmer McDonald the good news. With that, he left, and the kittens were happy to see him hopping down the lane once again. Oh my gosh, here are our next two pages. They're so cute. Look at the little cats. The little kittens. The little kittens are having a rummage sale. Oh my gosh. They're having a rummage sale. I have to, oh, this one is making a cookie. I'm way too excited about this. Thanks. I mean... That's adorable. Look at this cat. This cat's making a gingerbread cookie, y'all. So cute. So, on with our story. And just as they said that day of the meeting with Mr. Bunny Rabbit, each of the little kittens began earning money in his own way. Taffy and Inky spent many days in their attic, collecting pots and pans and pails and brooms and all kinds of things that their mommy had saved. They built a counter to display all of these things and even made a big sign for the rummage sale. Yes, it was a real rummage sale, and oh, what fun they had! They sold every single thing and earned lots of pennies. And Little Fuzzy Nose was now a famous baker. She made dozens and dozens of little gingerbread cookies, and they were so cute. 
They had raisin faces and tiny little pieces of chocolate for their coat buttons. She wrapped each one very carefully and put them in a big basket. Down the lane she would go, stopping at each house, and each time she showed her cookies, the animals loved them so much that they bought them for their children. Oh, she was earning lots of pennies every day and having fun too. Here we are on our next, our next pages. You can see here, we got the kitties. Kitties with some fish, and then cats. These little cats over here. And while Fuzzy Nose was selling cookies, Clinker and his little pal Checkers were busy fishing. Each morning they would be awake before the sun was up. They would carry their fishing poles and baskets over their shoulders, and they would fish all day long. And then in the evening, they would string the fish they had caught on their poles so that everyone could see them. And down the lane they would go. Didn't they catch big fish? Oh my, but they certainly look heavy to carry. But they were wonderful fish, and they sold every one they caught. Fluff and Muff, the two baby kittens of White Fur Village, were earning money too. They were picking hickory nuts in the orchard. Fluff would climb the ladder and pick the nuts from the tree and give them to Muff, who carefully put them when their basket was filled, they would leave the orchard and go back to the village to sell them. Fluff and Muff. Fluff and Muff and Clinker. <laughs> Clinker and Checkers. Clinker and Checkers. Here are the next pages. The next couple of pages. This is the end of our story. This is the end of our story. For the next few weeks, all of the kittens were very busy earning money. And with every kitten working hard, it didn't take long at all for them to have enough money so that Farmer McDonald could buy some grain for the chickens. He bought the food from a farmer who lived far, far away, where there wasn't any cold winter. And oh, the kittens were so happy now, and so was Mr. Bunny Rabbit. Each time he told his bunny friends about the kittens and how much they helped, his little cotton tail would wiggle and his pink ears would twitch with pride. Oh, wow. And Farmer McDonald was so very happy that he told the kittens that they could play on his farm any time they wanted. And what fun those little kittens had. They played hide-and-seek in the straw pile and ran in and out of the barn door. But most of all, they liked to help Farmer McDonald feed the chickens, just as Whiskers is doing here. Mm hmm, there's Whiskers. Whiskers is helping to feed the chicken. All that summer, the kittens played in the warm sunshine, and in the fall, they played in the orchard, running between the trees. It was such fun. But soon winter time came, and then the kittens rested so that they would be peppy for Easter. Because it is at Easter that the kittens work their hardest. They scamper all about the farm, collecting eggs. And when they have collected many baskets, they pile the eggs into a wagon for the bunnies to pull to the tree. And there, in the treehouse, Mr. Bunny Rabbit colors the Easter eggs, which are all good little children find in their baskets on Easter morning. So, I hope you enjoyed our little story. <laughs> little story, I know it was a longer, it's a short story, but yeah, I hope you liked it. So, here we are on our next couple pages. We have a couple poems here. It's a pretty forest scene on this one. We have like a silhouette. See that? A little silhouette. This girl in a dress. She's got some flowers. So, this next poem is called The Flowers Awakening. The Flowers Awakening by Yuda Ramsey Bates. Spring beauty lifted her tiny head and peeped shyly all around, wondering if in her woodland bower signs of life could be found. Yes, there was a charming anemone, and close to an old dead stump stood her last year's neighbor, Mr. Mushroom, big and plump. And there was modest Miss Violet in her bonnet so blue and trim, the Dutchman's breeches were marching along on their slim, slender, graceful stem. Down by the brook, sweet buttercup nodded her head of gold, while Jack in the pulpit stood erect and preached in accents bold. All through the woods, as the wind passed by, could be heard so sweet and clear, the genial bluebells tinkling out, Ho, ho, friends, spring is here! 
Spring Beauty smiled a happy smile when she heard the gladsome news, unfurled her dainty petticoats, and danced in her little green shoes. And then this next poem is called The Pirate Wind. On this page here, The Pirate Wind by Millie Walton. The rowdy wind went roving for conquest to prove his might. Although I felt his powerful breath, he was hidden from my sight. He made the dead leaves scamper. Trees wildly waved their arms. Across the March sky, fleecy clouds sped by in great alarm. He whipped my skirts about me and boisterously pulled my hair. And when I fought against him, of course, he was not there. I heard his robust laughter as he gloated over each freak, and then the blustering pirate boldly kissed me on the cheek. This is a pretty, pretty illustration here. This little girl with all her little animal friends, little animal friends in the forest. And then this page is just, we have some ducks down here. This poem is called Spring is Here by Bertha L. Stone. When you wake up in the morning to the singing of the birds, pouring out their hearts in gladness with a song too sweet for words, spring is here. When the sun shines in your window, ere you open sleepy eyes, dancing through the window curtains, golden rays from bare spring is here. When you see the robin redbreast hopping round upon your lawn, searching, listening for his breakfast, then you know that winter's gone. Spring is here. When the sky is so blue it shimmers as it greets the newborn day, while the cloudlets white and fluffy float along their lazy way, spring is here. When the breeze at early mornings, sweetly fresh, caressing, pure, and the air divine elixir doth our every ailment cure. Spring is here. Spirits rise, morale is lifted, gone the winter's gloomy pall. Exultation, life is glorious, we respond to springtime's call. Spring is here. This one's called Blossoming Time. Blossoming Time by Agnes Davenport Bond. It is blossoming time, and for miles around, the orchards are pink and white, as their fragrance is carried upon the breeze and wafted into the night. The meadows are lush with budding flowers, and the streams are buoyant and strong. All nature is lavish when April time comes, with its color and beauty and song. New life from the old comes up all about, when springtime returns again. Old dreams are reborn and hope is renewed once more in the hearts of men. And here we have our next pages. Nice floral, this purple floral illustration. And then we have um, this green page. We have little lambs. Little lambs down here. Hopping about. Hopping about. And this one is called Spring Fever, Spring Fever by Helen Etnier, I hope. This April day of sun and shade seems to be expressly made to take a walk in to explore the countryside beyond my door. I know a place back in the hills where I might find wild daffodils, and on the way I'd surely see the pink veil of a redbud tree. The greening pastures on my way would hold some baby lambs at play. White clouds would drift across the sky, I'd hail a soaring butterfly. But suddenly I'm worn and tired, something surely has transpired within the hour to make it seem it's nicer just to sit and dream. Here we have our next couple poems. This has like a nice river, nice river scene. And then we have this little So, this poem is called The River Bend by Frank H. Keith. I walk through woods where streams are young, and bright new songs are freely strung from tree to tree, where buds are thick on merry stems, and children pick bright blossoms in childish glee, ignoring signs and finds, and me. 
I walk along the river bend where youth and spring forever send their fairest blooms, and sadly I am conscious of how soon they die. I who saw youth and hurried past the river bend of life so fast. And then our next one is called Happiness is a Child. Happiness is a Child. We have this little child right here. Mm -hmm. This is by Ethel H. Bailey. Happiness is a child with a merry shining eyes, a light with wonderment and filled with surprise. Happiness is a child with woeful, tearful plea to soothe a bumped head or heal a bruised knee who comes in for a kiss with candy-smeared face, and from the dawn to dark scatters toys every place. Happiness is a child with a first Christmas tree, who claps his hands with joy, the lovely thing to see, who sees a treasure rare in the first flower of spring, and finds a new delight in every, in every living thing. Happiness is a child who kneels at night to pray and asks, please bless mother for all she's done today. And here we have our last poem, the last poem, and it's called Drop a Pebble, Drop a Pebble, and that is exactly what is happening, what the boy's doing, he's dropping a pebble, right here, some beautiful swans on the bottom. Okay, so Drop a Pebble by James W. Holy. Drop a pebble in the water, just a splash, and it is gone. But there's half a hundred ripples circling on and on, spreading, spreading from the center, flowing out to sea, and there's no way of telling what the end will be. Drop a word of cheer and kindness, just a flash, and it's gone. But there's half a hundred ripples circling on and on bearing hope and joy and comfort on each dashing wave till you wouldn't believe the volume of the good you gave. Drop a word of cheer and kindness in a minute you forget, but there's gladness still a swelling, joy a circling yet. And you've rolled a wave of comfort whose sweet music can be heard over miles and miles of water just by dropping one kind word. Okay, my friend, that wraps up our video for today. I really hope you enjoyed listening to the poetry and prose of the 1953 Easter edition of Ideals. I am wishing you a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day or your night and a very good sleep. And until I see you next time, take